this is uh, an insight into independent record labels in 2019 with Dave of Big Scary Monsters. Hello, Dave. How are you? Hello, I'm good. You? I'm good. Thank you, dude. And good. Luke um, of Alcapop Records. How are you, man? I'm good, thanks. Um, my computer nearly crashed, so I was just having a mild panic. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> we're don't, okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good. So you're all good, yeah? You ready to go? Yes. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, look, I just want to, I think the best place to start um, would just be with you guys starting out. Um, how did you end up where you are today? What was your, your journey? Just to give a bit of context to everybody, everybody watching. Dave, we'll start with you and, and Big Scary Monsters. Okay. I'm Dave Owen. I'm the label manager for Big Scary Monsters. Um, I joined our company six years ago. No, five years ago, full time. Um, before that, I was sort of working on and off with Kev on little things. Before that, I did marketing for a living, and so I came into music through the back door kind of thing, but doesn't matter how you get in here, like, no, there's no standard route, so, yeah, there you go. Here how about you and Alcapop? Um, yeah, I've been working for Alcapop for, like, I think a year and a half now. Um, <coughs> again, um, a bit like Dave, like, not a conventional route in, um, kind of started doing music stuff on my own, and then did some stuff with Big Scary Monsters, volunteering and stuff, and then met Jack um, from Alcopop through that and uh, kind of just asked him for a job and he gave me a shot. Um, and yeah, I've been with him a year and a half now. And he's going all right, I think. I, th I hope it's going well. <laughs> you're still there. You're here representing them today, so that can't, that can't be a bad sign at all. They wouldn't trust you with that. Um, cool, so I think, you know, there's definitely going to be people in this in the call who... Um, want to focus more on the music business side of running a record label themselves um, and definitely some artists as well who want a bit of insight on how they you know perhaps can approach a record label and things like that um, so I think we'll start with, with the artists um, for, for everybody in the call and um, I think it's, it's the age-old question isn't it but I'm just going to get straight straight in with it in, in 2021 how relevant do you guys think a record label is to an art to an artist's career at, at this point in time um i'll go first if you want um i think i think from an artist's point of view a label is very important but it depends as an artist what you're looking for i don't think in 2021 an artist needs a label i don't i don't think that i think you can do it yourself i think if you've got the skills the knowledge and the sort of get up and go sort of diy attitude i think you can go quite far but i don't think I think it's all about, and it'll be a constant theme for me this afternoon, is picking who you work with and your team around you and be, and be wary of the fact that they're an extension of what you're about, of what you want to do. And that's where I think labels now add value because we have the 20 years of expertise. We have, we know about what we're doing. We know, we, we think of the things that you don't necessarily think of um i think that yeah we add i think the key thing is thinking about adding value and where people in your team have value and i think a label adds value in most in most situations absolutely and luke do you have anything yeah to add? i uh i pretty much just like to echo what dave said really um you do you do you don't need a label but they can be incredibly useful and can be used to open doors um, and it's also someone else in your corner. It's more these days, especially on the independent label side, it's sort of more of a partnership than necessarily the label is your boss and you do what they say. It's more of like a team and you work together. So from that end, like, yeah, I don't think you need a record label, but they are useful if you find the right one. And like Dave said, you've got to look to, to match what you want with the label you want to approach. Yeah, definitely. Well, I spoke to um, Justine Jones of Church Road Records. We did a little pre-recorded interview yesterday. And for everyone watching, that is on the uh, Soundcheck webpage. So you should check that out. It's really, really good chat. And we, we, yeah, we said similar things, you know, about having your team around you and, and having, as you say, as you both say, you know, a relevant team, not just anybody. Um, how, you know, if you're an artist, how do you go about, because I think, you know, if you're sending a cold email to EMI, um, you're, you're probably not going to get very far. So as an artist, how do you find, um, you know, perhaps a label in your niche or how, you know, how do you approach the, the right people? I think you'd know. I think, I think the most important thing for artists, I, I would, I recommend them is, it's, it's very easy to get lost in 
the music business and the music industry and and to be frank can i swear it's yeah well, I, 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 Megan. Megan, okay i was just checking i was just checking no no, no 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 do not <laughs> no, swear no. do not do that oh dear. okay <laughs> it's 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 it, it, i think I think this idea that you, that, what was the question again? Sorry, you, you sorry, tell me about my language. <laughs> for, for independent artists, uh, finding, um, you know, somewhere they can fit in, how do they find their team? Yeah, that's, like, that's it. You, you don't necessarily, you don't get lost on, on, on trying to get to this thing. This, 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 you need a label, you need a manager, you need this, you need that. Do your thing, focus on the important things that you can control as a band. Writing some songs, getting some good songs that are of a reasonable sort of listenable standard, like they're not recorded on like pots and pans and sounds like it was recorded in a toilet. You know, focus on building your fan base, focus on on when we can go back to it, touring, playing gigs, getting that live show down, you know, and then basically the people will come to you and I like, get to a good position where you you just it, it, you, you're, you're attractive as a, as a as a as a as something to invest in. Like a label will invest in you, like their time and their money, because you've put the effort in to get you to get all of that sort of thing up to up, up to standard. Cool. Yeah. Look, I'm going to go to you because obviously you're doing A and R at Alcopop. Is that right? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, very similar to what Dave said in that. Focus on what you want to do. Focus on the band you want to be or the artist you want to be and make connections and these things will slowly come um making sure you're interacting with other bands that you want to you feel like you're similar to or you feel like you want to be part like touring with or whatever is really important especially with social media as well um a lot of a lot of bands like sort of neglect that and don't interact with other bands but it can't you can't underestimate the importance of having other bands shouting about you as well as um just looking after yourself and, yeah and that's absolutely. it good there's a good point at least i, I want to pick on there is like other bands like if you're in an area like that all right you know there's bands that sound like you you should play shows together get that thing together get fans together build something don't wait around for something to come to sort of lift you out of whatever if it ain't there make it yourself do it yourself you've got you've got around you've got around if you haven't got like a booking agent around you book your own book your own shows if there's a venue that will let you put on nights get down there you don't have to don't stay in your lane either if you like different types of music put them all on there get everyone in there like really important to have this like like this get up and go 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 sort of attitude and make it sort of happen yeah, and that, that doesn't even just apply to artists as well. That applies to people just trying to get in the music business. Don't don't wait around to be offered a job. Like the reason I, I started working at Alcopop is because I went out and I did stuff on my own first. And and that makes your CV look much more attractive. So the get up and go attitude is so important for, for the music industry. Like you don't you don't need you don't need necessarily loads of qualifications or a uni degree or necessarily anything like that, but you do what you do need is to to put yourself out there and give things a go because otherwise no one's going to take a chance on you if you haven't taken a chance on yourself yeah and i think you guys both spoke there about you know attractiveness either to it to a label or a more industry side of things or as as a band and i think that is definitely something that i want to talk about so if we you know just whatever your thoughts are unbridled opinions from both perspectives of you know as a band from a label perspective what what things are labels looking for? Are they looking for, you know, Justine and I spoke yesterday about bands going to labels with finished records and how that can be a complete game changer. So those types of things, I can't, I'll tell you what, we'll start with um, artists and labels um, and how they can make themselves look attractive. And then we'll go on to a more music business, business, you know, internship, applying for a job, that role. But yeah, either of you, you know, you, you take, take that one by the horns. Well, I get, go on, go on. Um, so I think especially sort of over the last, year where there's been no live music and everything i do via e a and r now is via email um so and online and all those sort of things so the ways to make yourself look attractive is yeah finished records are great to send through even if they're not 100 percent finished but if you have something that's close to a finished product great if you have press shots if you have send everything over say send a, a nice 
constructed epac with you know these are our songs here's some lovely press shots here's some ideas for artwork here's some ideas for music video even if they're not finished if you can show that you have a vision and you have sort of a working goal towards it can be it makes you more attractive because as sort of running i run my own label as well and also work for alka pop and the thing that attracts me to bands is when they have sort of this idea of where they want to go it's not just we have some songs can you put them out it's we have some songs we have a concept or we have an idea and we have something we want to push towards that's way more sort of attractive to get involved with because you have a goal a collective goal and you can help each other achieve it absolutely dave i think there's a hint of that in what we look for it's just got to be a bit it's got to be something to it do you know what i mean whether you know first and foremost songs some songs like it doesn't matter i personally don't think if you've got a finished album whether it matters or not if you've bought two or three songs and then you know say well we've got loads of other songs we just haven't recorded them yet if you've got two or three amazing songs like th th that's a difference but then if you marry all that in with everything else like back in good times like we're, we, we're gigging this is who we played with you know you've got to think i hate this word brand but look at yourself I fucking i hate that word it's a horrible word but look at yourself like a a product like I want a buyer, you know, like I want you, you know, I want you on my team, man. Like, what you bring in, like, what are your unique things that you are as a band? Like, you look good, you sound good, you're like, you've played with these people, you've like, you know, you played to your first show, like two people, but your second show, 100 people turned up because you did X and Y. Cool, that's cool. Like, how did you do that? Yeah. Like, what, what, what did you do there? You know, it's just something interesting from for, for, for me. And um, not sounding like, you know, we want to, I don't know, the amount of pop punk bands that we had sent that say we want to sound like Net Deep. I mean, on the, on the best day, I, I don't want to listen to Net Deep. So <laughs> on those, like, I feel well, that. I want to listen to a, I don't want to listen to it, like a band that sounds like that. Be yourself. What makes you, you, I guess. Yeah, I think, you know, when you're approaching, you know, when you're, when you're working that out and, and you're an artist, like, there's going to be a few young artists watching this. Um, what key things are obviously the songs but so you, let's say you know you've worked that out and you kind of do have a few unique selling points Dave you say it doesn't matter if you've got the finished record you just want to hear some songs whereas yes. you know Luke you said um, you know having a full record is advantageous um, I mean so it's not it's not sort of be all and end all but like it is nice when you get sent something that's pretty much finished and you can start rolling with it it's great but then yeah. Even even if you we we've signed bands where they've come with an EP, and then mm -hmm. want to do an album, so we do the EP and then we invest to go forward and do that album which isn't recorded yet. Yeah. So do you think you know? In, we, we, I just spoke to um, Ricky Bates, who's a, who's a promoter at the Joiners, and Roxanne, who works at ATC Live, and we were speaking about the live industry. But there's there's one thing I'm noticing throughout all these interviews is that that all the advice in some way, and and this is a positive thing, is is very similar. They were saying that. In their live industry, that you do have to take you ha you have to take a punt on people. Um, yeah. But my argument to though to to them was, you know, how important to to the live industry is ticket sales and numbers. And their argument was, well, you know, if we love something, we'll take a punt on it. Yeah. But ultimately, it needs it does eventually need to bring something back. How does that work in the in the in the in the record industry? We don't necessarily. You can't base it like social media is not a real thing. It's not reality. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's it's but like everybody gets so het up on man, that band's got like eight thousand followers. That band that's got eight thousand followers might have just played to like four people. Your band with no followers might have just played to like 150, 200 people who are all about to buy that EP that you've burnt on a CDR. Do you know what I mean? Numbers ain't, mm. ain't nothing. It's about a feel from a label's perspective of putting it all together. I guess, and like what Ricky says is, is bang on. Of course, you're going to take, we, we take punts. We're an independent, we're, we're at a level where we are the risk, the independents are the risk takers. We're the people that take the risk. So, you know, your bigger labels could come and take, 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 take those bands off and on or whatever. But yeah, like numbers is, it's not all about numbers. No, it's but just, I, I think, you know, we spoke, when I speak to Justine yesterday, um, we, we spoke about that and 
I think you're completely right. I think it's really encouraging for people to hear, you know, all the young people in bands and, and watching this, you know, that people will be willing to take a part of them. It's obviously great for them to hear. I just, it's very difficult for, for young artists, isn't it? In a, in a, you think about Spotify as a platform and it's so statistically heavy. You have your number of streams staring you in the face. You have your monthly listeners staring you in the face. Is it, you know, but, does but, it, but, does but it... Leo, 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 right, those, that data, data on its own without any context is just numbers on a page. If I see a band that might have, you know, they might only have 2,000 streams on Spotify, but then you go, right, okay, but, you know, they haven't got any press. Uh, mate, uh, I mean, there's, there's a booking agent maybe who wants, to, who wants to get on board. Their live show is really good, you know, they've played local, like a couple of other bands of, of our bands or, or bands we know have whispered on her and said, have you heard that band? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Those numbers alone don't get hit up on, on, on for me anyway, but again, it's opinions in it, but numbers yeah, all numbers and everything need context so if you focus on the whole package mate yeah i, I think that's that that as an artist should be focusing on the whole package and then we as a we as a, let us worry as a label about the bits we see don't worry about your spotify numbers keep your hustle and keep doing what you're doing do you know what i mean keep playing and then there'll be a time when your label want that you need a label to get involved to like you know kick start that thing to to take it to take it on no, i think that's really good i think that's a, you know that's the exact <laughs> answer that that we all want to hear and i but but what i mean is it's good to hear it because i think you know i think that's what everybody and this is what's so good about this event and everyone watching is that hearing that firsthand from somebody like you dave is just going to be so encouraging because i think as an artist as a young artist you know you it's easy to get discouraged by the under a thousand stream thing on spotify but if someone like you is saying well do you know what? it actually doesn't make that much odds i think it's 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 so encouraging and luke do you have any yeah a drink on that just sort of on Spotify numbers as well is I, there are local bands to me that I know have hit over a hundred thousand streams on singles, done really well on Spotify and about 10 people will go see them when they play live. So it, again, what Dave said, it's not the be all and end all, you know, as, don't stress about it. Don't, especially don't stress about it to the point where you're considering paying for playlists, paying don't for pay those, for play, don't never, pay for playlists. never, never, don't never do that. Um, never do pay for likes or follows like because people we can see people can see right through it as mm -hmm. well um, and it just won't be beneficial at all um, and, and also if you've got 200 <coughs> followers on Facebook so and every post you put up has 50 or 60 people interacting with it that's way more sort of encouraging to a label than someone with 2,000 people that has 50 or 60 people interaction with it because so you, you think know, the ratio is quite important then the follower to interaction ratio is perhaps more important than numbers yeah, as a, as a, if you if you're engaging a base fan base of say 100 200 people consistently and they are they love your band and they're telling all their mates about your band that's so much more powerful than having 10,000 likes on facebook and no one cares we we've uh, got a band we we work with the band who are our biggest band by a long way and they toured. They've toured the world, but well, the year before it all went a bit wrong. Um, they they toured like four, they toured three continents. They didn't get bogged down by numbers. Like pre they haven't got amazing press. They just play loads. Of, they just plays loads of. There's a train going by. There's a train. Yeah. They play loads of. Um, they play loads of shows. You know, Spotify don't put them on that many playlists, but they stream numbers now because they've got fans. They go to like Texas. And play to a, like 500, 600 people. You see what I mean? These things, you know, you can get bogged down in in Spotify and numbers, and I've got to get to X and Y. But th there's another point I want to pull out there is that think about as an artist, what kind of career do you want? Are you in this to like make a shed ton of money and like quit your job tomorrow? I mean. I have to be honest, like nine times out of 10, I ain't realistic. You know, what does success look like in a year? What does success look like in two years? What does success look like in five, 10? What sort of bands do you want to play with? What sort of bands, whose careers do you, do you, do you, want, to, do you want to emulate, if you like? You know, who, which band, like think of those type of things. And then, yeah, I just think let that thing organically grow and have some like loose goals about where you want to go and what you want to do to achieve to get to that next level. Yeah, I think. And 
sorry, on that, um, <laughs> thinking about those goals and sort of where you want to be and who you want to be like will help you in that conversation with a label or approaching a label. Because it, if you're looking at, say, you're looking at a band like um, a, a band that was on Big Scary Monsters that you, you really liked and were doing really well, you look at them and you go, OK, well, this is who I want to emulate. What steps did they do? And you can kind of that that narrows it down to the label you want to look at or the the types of labels you want to look at because rather than thinking oh i want to be like whoever or i don't know like it doesn't narrow it down it doesn't help you look for where you want to be um so i'm thinking about those questions that dave just said to think about that will help you with so much more as well it'll help you think about who you want to book with what festivals you want to aim for what venues you want to play it gives you those answers yeah, absolutely. I, I think going back to what we were saying about, um, you know, Spotify numbers and, and, and all of that, you were saying about the live show, Dave, there, and, you know, that your band on Big Scary Monsters who, you know, the uh, numbers may not be quite good. And I'm going to hold what I'm saying there because Silas has asked and we want to prioritize these questions. So yeah. Silas says, hey, what type of deal do you offer artists at your labels when signing a new artist? How did you finance these projects? I run an indie label called Chorpit Records and the biggest challenge is financing development. Um, so, <laughs> without giving away, like boring is death with deal. We do a standard fifty-fifty deal on most on on most, and that is probably a re like a reasonable indie layer deal. Is that basically Blacks will invest in you, and then 50, once everything is recouped, we split we split fifty-fifty. Yeah, like the profits fifty-fifty. And to be honest, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find an indie that doesn't offer something something like that where it's very much we come up with the money up front for you and then obviously when we all sell loads of bloody loads of records and we're all running off into the sunset having had a successful campaign the profits yeah are then shared because the risk the risk is in theory shared etc etc <clears throat> I think that's similar to you know what Justine was saying yesterday about Church Road and guys for everybody watching what Silas has done there is really great. We want as many questions from you as possible. Um, so yeah, just ping them in the chat. We'll prioritize those. Um, but how does that differ for anyone who might who may not know the 50-50 deal from what artists who were signed to a major label might experience? All I'll <laughs> say is go look at, read anything about what's happened to Taylor Swift or Kanye or any of those sort of artists about all this stuff about owning your masters, owning your rights. We do not own at any point. We do not own your recordings. We license them for like a 50-50 deal, for example, without getting into boring business stuff. And that's Silas, by the way. Email me if you want to know more. I can easily pick up the phone and talk to you about this. Dead easy. But yeah, 50-50 deal. And then, um, what was I saying? I forgot my train of thought again. Um, Taylor Swift, Kanye. Oh yeah, sorry, we don't own your masters, we license. So that is for, so you, we will go to you, right? We will take, we will own these, we will own, we will basically take your those recordings off you for four years and during those four years or six or eight or whatever the length of the contract is, we have the right to then print them on vinyl, put them on digital, do all that stuff for you. And then if at the end of that deal, you're like, well, we're moving on now or, you know, we, 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 we don't really care for this anymore. You have them back. You can then go and do exactly what you want with them. I just think, I think to, to a few people listening, and, you know, I may have got this completely wrong, but I think a 50-50 deal is, is obviously a fantastic deal for an artist in, in the grand scheme of things. But for some people listening, they might be like, what, 50% of my, you know what I mean? But in, in actuality, that is unbelievable for an artist. In, in well, you do exactly. You don't, because, like, you've got to think of it. It's your code to us. And we are putting up the money for everything. We are actually putting up the initial investment. So, you know, vinyl costs rec cost, cost money. I mean, even if you're doing tapes and CDs, that costs money. Um, you know, hosting these things on a digital on a platform that delivers to digital services like Spotify, Deezer, Apple, whatever, all costs money. And so somebody has to fund that cost up. So that's what the label is doing. It's basically going, well, here's some money. Like once we see that money back, you know, then everybody, 
everybody can get can get paid and there's a million different variations on that theme you can pull different bits of it out and it's an absolute minefield but say to bands always read the contract like any any deal you get offered get a lawyer to read whatever piece of paper has been put in front of you do not ever sign a piece of paper blind just because a label goes yeah yeah mate it's fine it's fine it's fine get a solicitor to look at it and look is that a similar story at Alcapot? Yeah, very similar. I just sort of on the comparison to, to major labels, um, I actually did a course fairly recently with Matt Errington, who works at some of, with some of the major labels, and he was saying 80% of artists that sign the major labels don't get anything past their advance. So what David's talking about when you get that 50%, you wouldn't even get that. You just get the money at the start and nothing else. Um, and even when you do, you're probably going to be on 20% or less split. So that's the difference. Obviously, a major label will probably you'll you'll get more streams, you'll sell more records in theory, but but that's that's the difference in sort of like percentage wise what you're looking we at only, from a major. And Alco Pop, and Alco Pop and BSM, we never ever will tie you into two, three albums, four albums, anything yeah, like that. Yeah, as well. It's done on one album basis. So basically, the idea is that we all smash that together. And then we all do the next one together. But then if it but doesn't you work out, to. you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for, for record labels like, like you guys, you know, I spoke to Justine yesterday. Um, and like I say, yeah, I'd really encourage everyone to watch that because like I say, it was, it was really fun. Um, and she said at Church Road, obviously everybody operates completely differently. But she said that they would like bands ideally, um, and perhaps they're a smaller operation than, than you guys, um, to have funded the recording themselves and then they'll get involved. Is that a similar thing with you? Or, you know, from what you're saying there, Dave, it sounds like, you know, BSM will offer to pay for the record, recoup. It depends. It depends. It, 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 like Leo, like me, yeah, it's like, how long is a piece of string? So, like if yeah. we've been working with a band for two or three albums, you know, and they're like, well, we're down on, we're, we're down on, we're down on. I mean, if you deliver to me, I don't know, the next repeater by Fagazi tomorrow. I like you ain't got the money to record it, and we've listened to it, and we all gone shit. What? What? Like <laughs> we're gonna find the money for you. What Justine say? And like nine times out of ten, of course you funded it yourself. So that's not a cost. Like yeah, that's not a cost. That's that's fine. You've done that. So the cut that. So you know that's not involved in that contract then. Therefore, but yeah, oh. yeah. So well, like every. Well, say last thing I say on contracts is. They're all different. They've all got similar themes at our level. Like, I mean, you've talked about Justine, very good friend of ours, Lou, and obviously Al Capot. We all, we're all very, we talk weekly <laughs> or between us. So, you know, we're all pretty much offering the same thing pretty much at the, yeah. like, at the end of the day. <clears throat> well, just before Silas um, asked his question, <laughs> I was going to um, go to you guys and, and talk to you about, um, you, were you were speaking about uh, gigging, Dave, and how important it is it can be and how how it can be more important for some artists than streaming and vice versa for artists at the moment and th this is aimed at both of you what can they be doing today in covid without you know booking a tour um what what is the things that, that can be happening whether it's behind the scenes or you know to their to their fans i mean i think there's this there's this real sort of focus i think a lot of bands get hung up on creating perfect content for social media and things like that and i think that that's a really dangerous to trap to fall into i think if you're creating engaging stuff and just chat even just chatting to your your fans um over the whole period where you can't play live or you know putting little even like you've just recorded a little guitar play for at home it doesn't have to be super high quality it doesn't have to be mad but like those those things do really help and those are things that you can start doing but also it's a really good time to sort of focus on like the admin side of running, being in a band and getting everything in order. Um, so many, like I, we've actually, I've actually recently signed a band to my label that I've been mates with them for a very long time and they've never really got everything together. And what they've done over the last year is they all actually were like, well, we can't play live, we can't do anything else. So let's, let's get everything sorted. And they got themselves to a point where they became attractive for, for me to sign. So because they, they took that time to go through and do the admin, make sure all their social media accounts are all up to date, like the boring stuff, but it's stuff that does need doing. And 
if you can't play live and you can't do those other things it, or, or you can't go into a recording studio what it's a good opportunity to keep up with those things and like make make yourself look a bit more attractive by just looking like your your bits in order basically i think to link it to that especially this pandemic it's been about hustle getting on you getting on your horse and thinking how can we think about things differently everyone's had to think about things differently from the bottom right up to the top you know like the the rules that were there are not there the revenue streams like like, like the game is, is, is changed and it will take a little while to get back to normal but the sort of for me the principles still remain you know you can still be focusing like what Luke says you're not focusing on like the admin side of things you can still be writing the number of bands that we've had have just literally come now everything starts to open back up and you can go into a studio and literally have gone got an album ready now it's like cool okay brilliant <laughs> you know keep writing and if you're not feeling creative don't don't beat yourself up man like again you're setting your own timetables and if you're not enjoying it just 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 just, just take 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 a break like you can't be on on your hustle 24 7 like and still be a creative blooming genius like take some time to chill out we're in the middle of a pandemic music is important but at the same time like look after yourself and look after your noggin and your bandmates so you've got a band to go back to in a couple of months time when it all gets good again yeah yeah i definitely agree with dave on that one i i've i've had bands that sort of <coughs> have put a lot of pressure on themselves to to do stuff during the last year and I think it's really important to remember that we are in a pandemic and not to put so much pressure on yourself, especially when the world is upside down. It's something that I've had to sort of adapt to myself. I'm sure Dave and the BSM guys have as well. Like it's it because everything has changed so drastically and it's an unprecedented situation. Don't don't make yourself do stuff at your own sort of to the detriment of your own health. Like don't do it. It's not no. worth it. It's much better to look after yourself, take a week off, take a few days off, even if, even if you need to not touch music for a month for your own mental health or just to chill out, like do it because it will help. And in the long run, you'll be feel much better for it rather than forcing everything out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, Luke, you, you mentioned just before there about, you know, you've just signed, obviously you're working at Alcapop and you're also running your own label. Um, so with your own label, I'm assuming there's the money behind it is is all yours. Um, correct me if that's wrong. Um, so so what does that look like? You know, so, so let's say an artist watching this goes to somebody, say like Silas, you guys sound like you're in similar positions, you know, a bit of a self-funded um, DIY label. Let's say so, somebody gets signed by a label like Silas's. Um, what's the process there? How, are you going to go and you know dig into your savings and fund this band's record or how does that look? So I mean, ours. So my my on a, on a personal level, my company sort of runs um, events and things like that. So we actually make the majority of our money from online events and things like that now. So that actually is just being reinvested into running the record label. Like that's basically where the fund for the record label comes from. So I'm sort of in a unique position. Like before the pandemic, we used to run nights at nightclubs and put uh, gigs on and festivals on. So like. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're looking at starting up a label, the way I got into it was I started off promoting, doing things like that, and sort of pushing that direction, which helps you sort of get into this local scene, meet new bands, do those sort of things, and make the connections. And then waited until I was in a position where I had sort of the contacts and the money to launch the label, and then did it that way. Yeah, I think you know you said earlier about. Um... Uh, you know, you're, you know, you just asked Jack at Alcapop for a, for a, for a job, and hey, presto, you got one. I think, you know, how I think many people would love to be um, in your position, working where you are and doing what you're doing. So, can you shed any light, you know, on that, you know, in, in a bit more detail? How did you end up, you know, at Alcapop? Well, well, like, like I said before, when we we're talking about what artists can do and grafting and looking at sort of things you can do on your own that's I think that's the the most especially for young people trying to get in I'm I'm 24 um I started my music business when I was 19 with my best mate and we just sort of what threw ourselves into it I mean we used a bit of our student loan <laughs> and and sort of just 
gave it a shot and you know you I wouldn't have got into the, the the reason I was in the position to have that conversation with Jack was I ended up at the great escape because I was on a scheme that they were running for young promoters and those sort of things are really important look for those schemes look for look for those organizations that can help you get in a room with those people that you want to be in a room with um big scary monsters have actually been a huge help for me along the way um, they did a pop-up shop in Cardiff and I worked that and that was sort of really my start into getting into that world and meeting Jack. So I have Dave to thank for a lot of it as well, to be fair. <laughs> well done, Dave. I think um, uh, hit on, Luke's hit on a really good point there. And I'd say to any young person, look, there's no such thing as like a journey that's a linear straight, like this pencil, A to B, do you know what I mean? So, you know, you might have a, have a, have a, I've a dream, I want to work for a label, I want to, I want to be an NR, I want to be a promoter, I want to do this, that, and the other. But what you need, the key thing to any of that, and it is a life lesson, really, it sounds a bit cheesy coming from this old man here, but it's always be learning, always find, always arm yourself with new skills. You know, it's a bit, it's funny, before I worked in music, all the things that I learned outside of music have helped me more than the things I've learned inside music. Um, like when I was working in, in publishing as a marketer, you know, all these principles, all these skills, like all the, you know, Photoshop, like um, all those packages, like learning all that sort of stuff. There's no such thing as something, you, it, there shouldn't be any situations that you can't learn from. Like, so that, that crappy job you've got, like that, that thing you have to go to the pub in the evening, that's people skills, you learn to talk to people, you learn to lift stuff around, you're learning graft, you've got money handling. Stick that, you know, things like that. Like we, we, for example, we um, we run the merch at um, Arc Tangent and Two Thousand Trees festivals. We offer kids, like we we offer kids, like chance to come and do some shifts for us. You think, mm, slinging merch? Oh, mate, what, what's, what's that going to teach me, mate? You, you're with a lot of people who, like, you've got bands coming in and out. You've got Kev, who's the owner of Big Scary Monsters, next to me. You've got me, the label manager. You know, we're watching. It's not a coincidence that the two other kids that work, two, two people that work for us now, other two, that's where they started out. Luke, for example, that's where he started out. He came to us. Look for different opportunities. Everything doesn't have to be like that thing that's going to be the thing that gets you there. Like go from A to sort of C and then maybe come X. We'll go back to, we'll go to M and then we'll get there in the end if you, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I no, think I think one of the most important things is is getting like making sure you get in the room with people as well. Like even if it's like like they've said, slinging merch or volunteering somewhere or just standing on the door for an event. Um, getting yourself in the room and having those conversations, even if it's not about music, even if it's not about the job you want, building those connections are so much have so much more value than you could possibly conceive. I think um they're just they're so important just to be able to chat to just chat to people and become mates because you you'll get somewhere and and, yeah, no. and I got that feeds back just one quick put, last point on that if you haven't got a scene and you haven't got those people make it happen yeah all the best music scenes all the best things in music have happened because you because bored kids have gone you know what nothing's going on around there this is rubbish we all like the same thing you're all in bands, you're in bands, let's do it ourselves. I mean, I, I, there's, I hate to break a big music industry secret, but this stuff ain't hard. It's not hard. It's just hard work. <laughs> no, it's just hard work. It's not, no, nobody's getting like, there's no PhDs being handed out or like no one's getting any Nobel Peace Prizes. It's just graft and like learning and constantly doing it yourself. And like yeah. I say, yeah. DIY attitude all the time. Yeah, you say that and yeah, and yeah, I, yeah I completely agree. And I think, yeah, you make a good point. It, maybe it's not as hard or as impossible as it seems. But on the Isle of Wight, for example, which is obviously where all these guys um, are from at the moment, if you want to either as a promoter or as, a, as an artist, there's generally kind of one music venue on the island and it's 300. And if anyone knows for sure, you can pop it in the chat. I'm pretty sure it's 360 cap, which for a band starting out is pretty, it's pretty, it's a lot of tickets to sell. Um, and, and so how do you do that? How do you, you know, you, 
you know, as you say, Dave, you know, you're going to start it, do it yourself. You're going to make it yourself. The Isle of Wight is the archetypal. Yep. So there's one big suburb with nothing going on. How do you take an event there and make it something, you know, to write home about as an well, artist? First of all, I want to recommend a book. <laughs> like, uh, it's a bit of an old man book, but it's called, it's called Our Band Could Be Your Life. And it basically takes some bands from the 90s, like bands like Black Flag and Fugazi and a couple of those bands. And basically... All that scene, all that you, all that US hardcore thing came because like kids couldn't get into adult shows and they had to have like black mark, like they couldn't get into shows, so they did it. Mm. So, so, so like I say, they did it themselves. The Isle of the Isle of Wight to me sounds like just your mindset should be opportunity. You should be on this call now, writing this stuff down, going, right, like, tomorrow I'm gonna get in touch with the X and Y. I'm gonna go to that music college, ask them, and we'll put on a night here like is there any promoters if there's not approach the venue yourself so i want to put on a night i've got this many i can guarantee you this many tickets like if you're in i don't know sit form college college you've got a bunch of mates there right you've got poster boards get busy man hustle you know like you've got i don't know you've got your mates in a grime he's got like that sort of project you've got like your punk band down there you've got this down the other get them all together like put on a night do it and like the only thing the worst thing that could happen is it doesn't work but that's the best thing because then you've learned something you get me yeah just to just sort of build on that like i started promoting <clears throat> when i was at, at uni um and i i went straight to a, a venue and just said look i'm at uni i want to i want to put on some shows will you let me put on some shows um i'll, I'll try and get 50 people there from a society that I'm in like if you're in a group or a society or or anything like you can you you can somewhat use that to your advantage and tell the venue owners or something I also would recommend looking at things like um community centers um and m almost makeshift music venues like there might just there might be a music venue of one singular decent music venue but there are other, there will be other spaces um, and there will be places you might be able to find somewhere. Even like wedding venues or reception venues will have equipment and things that you can use. So be creative, be inventive. And also with the other white, don't be afraid to, to like jump over to Portsmouth or Southampton and try something there as well. Because there's plenty of good venues in both those cities as well. Yeah, your boy, I think Ricky, what, yeah. your boy Ricky will definitely help you out because Ricky yeah, is, yeah, is, is yeah. your man. He is, he is Mr. Southampton right there. He's a top bloke. Yeah, it was really good I, for everybody who was in that chat. You know, it was really great. And if you weren't there, it's been pre recorded like this one, so you can check it out. Um, yeah, but yeah, Ricky and Roxanne shared some stuff. And, but while we're on the topic of um, on, of touring, and I and I said this similar thing to, to Ricky and Roxanne, but from a record label um, perspective, you know, if let's say, you know, I'm in a band and I come to you guys and I'm like, you know, look, we've got this record and we've also got this support tour booked and this headline tour booked. Is that kind of, um, do you look at that and think, oh God, they put it to themselves. This is going to be atrocious. No way. Or do you look at that and think there's a chance there to be shifting records and selling some t-shirts or is it just, this is going to be great for the band? I, I look at that and go, there's a band that have worked hard and put their own shows. That's how I look at it. Like that's, a band going out and grafting, like Dave said earlier, it's it's one of the most important things. Like if you can do it yourself, do it. Um, yeah, because I think I think there's a bit there's a bit of a um of an attitude that some people have that is like, oh, I, I don't want to um look amateur or like look like I've done it myself. People, some people want to look like a major label project. You, you know, can't from, from the word go. You can't. The word the word amateur is just such a fucking nonsense word. Like an associate amateur with DIY, DIY is not is not amateur it, it shows like well in many ways it's the opposite because you it, can do it yourself it's so you, much harder you, exactly to do it it's yourself. totally pro it's a way to do if a band comes to me and says i put all my tours you mean you're one step ahead you're winning it's like yes you get it you get it you're the only ones that can 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 change it we obviously help but man like no one's going to deliver you on on onto tours there's no magic person like that's a team that you have to to get do you know what i mean and there's bands that like there's opportunities, crazy opportunities from touring. Support bands, you'll tour with a other band, and that band will might go to the label that they're on and go, you know what? Like, um, this support band is shit up. Like you need to check these out. Or I don't know. There's there's loads of things like that. Tours are great opportunities. Book them, book them, and get 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 them done. Like I always think in in the in the in, in the days of social media, why bands aren't gig swapping more. 
like finding a band that like you sound like or your mates with who live in Newcastle or like like I don't know Manchester or whatever is saying well I'll tell you what like you put a gig on up there we'll put a gig on down here and then maybe let's find one in the middle suddenly you've got three dates banging yeah all, isn't it? well I think it's a long weekend I think the amount of like um, synergy that we're seeing across all these talks in like a really positive way, not that everybody's saying the same thing in the, in the, in the sense that it's an echo, but just in these core values that people see that you guys seem to all be having, um, is, you're just really hammering at home because, you know, Ricky was saying gig swaps, you know, like you say, Dave, you know, it might be a bit of a dying breed, but why is it? Um, and I think, you know, yeah, like I, say, I, th I think, you know, some people think, um, yeah, they're hesitant to do things themselves because they don't want it to come across like, like nobody's supporting them but in actuality that's that's kind of a backward way of thing i feel like if you do it yourself you know nobody can give a crap more about your project than you like i can't care more about your if i care more about your project than you as a band i don't think you're doing it right so like i think that epitome of doing it yourself is just that i have the most passion for the thing that i do and i want the best for me, my bandmates, and, and this whole thing, and like only I can, only I can only bring that, and that's why I think that DIY thing runs through this whole thing is just like this passion, because we sure as hell don't do it for money at this level. <laughs> like no one, nobody is, nobody is sitting in gold toilets, like you know, drinking beers and just like having the best time of their lives. Nah, like we do it because we love it and we're passionate about it, and like artists, labels. Bookers, promoters, we all do it because we bloody love it. And if you've got to love it, love it too, I guess. Yeah. Luke, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. I had something very good, but it's gone now. Um, That's all right. Sorry. Well, if it comes back, <laughs> let us know. Um, yeah, again, if anybody has any questions, get involved because, um, yeah, obviously Dave and Luke, this is this is really good stuff. And, yeah, some really, really, really good answers coming, coming along here. Um, this is something else that, you know, just in the touch of, um, uh, you know, repeating some similar themes. When I was speaking to Ricky and Roxanne, I spoke about how I was speaking to somebody recently and they were like, oh, you know, I just want to start a, a pro my project fresh now because it's been three or four years and I feel like nobody wants to jump on now because they feel like it's been three years and it's not taking off. What do you guys think to that? Is it, do you think even maybe taking on an older project is more attractive in many senses because the groundwork is laid down? You've, you've got to, if you're in that position you've got to look at why you feel like that as well um is it is it some you if you just say that oh it hasn't worked and i don't know why that's a problem if you if you look at if you've been in a project for three or four years and you're like i i don't know what's uh, we're not doing very well but i know what's wrong then you can you've learned from it and maybe you carry on with that project maybe you start a new one but the important thing is learning from those experiences um if, if you're sat there thinking, oh, I spent three or four years working on this thing and I don't know what I've done and why no one else is getting on it, you need to have a real like long, hard look at what you've done and what where you're going. Yeah, but maybe not in the sense that it is completely failing, just in the sense, you know, you're still plugging away and perhaps it's a very slow trajectory upwards. You know, if they, you know, you then approach a label, is it, is it attractive? I guess what I'm trying to say, is it attractive for a label to jump on with something that's fresh and that they can grow with and, and nurture or is it you know jumping on something that they just love already i it's it, again it's just down to different circumstances a band could be four years five years in and be just bad luck there is such thing as bad luck or just not be with the right yeah. person and it just takes that label or that or them or the right person manager even you know someone's come on board to sort of pull it and say well you're not doing that right lads have you like that's it. If you thought about thought about thought about doing it like this, you know, fresh pair of eyes maybe. So a label, I, I don't care if you've been going like thirty years or or three. It's good stuff, and like you've 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 put some effort in, and like you know, you, you, there's something to work with. There's something the raw the more the raw materials are there. You can you still have the raw materials after three or four years. You know what I mean? Like no band name change is gonna or like you know just re rebrand is going to change that i don't i don't think you've either got it or you ain't and then yeah, if, you, yeah. if you ain't and you don't know why you ain't you possibly need to try and find something in you or around your support team that finds out why you ain't got it 
Yeah, Luke, what do you think? Just sort of adding to that, actually, like both <coughs> Alcopop and BSM have like a pretty big history of bringing on, taking on like older bands that maybe had success early in their careers and dipped off and then bringing it back. So I don't think like necessarily it's unattractive, you know, like um, we've, we've got an announcement next week. I won't tell you who, but we've got an announcement next week for a band that were doing great in the early 2000s and not heard from them until, I know you know, <laughs> and I've not heard from them for like 10 years, you know? Um, and I mean, uh, we were promised jetpacks that BSM signed is another good example. Their first album was amazing and they sort of dipped off a bit. And then the album they did with BSM is one of my all time favorites. So like, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily worry about going too long and, and not progressing um, and make, feeling that it's going to make you unattractive. No, that's really good stuff. Thank you, guys. Silas is um, coming with another question. He asked, a fantastic question. Any other positives you can take away from the pandemic for you and the label? For both Loads. Both? Like, I, I love this question. It's such a good question. Because we sat there at the beginning of the pandemic as, as BSM and we went, oh, shit. We were set for a big year with the label. Lots of good records. Slowly, like, bands went, well, we're not, we're not. We're not releasing that this year. We're not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. I think it brought out the best in our team, you know, negative things. We were in the middle, for example, the day we were the, we all got locked down, we were a week into a two-week stint at Bright, uh, sorry, two or three days, in fact, into a Brighton pop-up we'd done where we booked this, this lovely shop, two weeks, and, like, you know, that was gone. What they did was they turned it around, did some personal shopping inside 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 the shop. So you just you sort of emailed in and they went and got it and we did it on Instagram. It was weird, man. And then we also did like a, a virtual pop-up shop where we decided, you know, let's do it virtually. A lot of our artists sort of adapted. So we put out a couple of albums that the fans of these bands love, like Delta Sleep put together this beautiful sort of the live album, world. live album with a difference that featured videos from where they played all around the world and tied it all into that. There was another one, Vinny Caruana. We luckily recorded a live set from him at the Black Heart in, uh, Cam in, in Camden. Um, and luckily we were just like, well, let's, let's, instead of just sticking this on Spotify and going, you know, let's stick this on a nice double vinyl. Sold out 500 records in like two, two, three weeks. You know, these things, everything like this, and it's, this is why it's a good question and bands should, should think like this. I think this whole game, this whole thing is about mindset. Like, instead of being oh, like, oh, this is bad, isn't it? This is rubbish. Like, it is rubbish, but you're not going to get out of it by going, oh, this is rubbish. You're going to get out of it. It's like, that's a problem. What's the solution, man? Positive, like, it's a real cheesy thing to say, but opportunity, what opportunities are there? Like, you know, this is bad, but what opportunities does this make for us? Like, what does this make the future look like? Does, is this something we can do here to make this better? I've rambled. Yeah, I think now. when I spoke to um, Justine yesterday, she was saying that um, she found people in the Church Road uh, fan base were really generous with what they were spending their money. Did you guys find that also? Yes, we found that. But then that's through good, through, through Church Road spans. BSM's bands, Alcopop bands. That's what we do as labels. We develop, we help develop fan bases. And that is why at the end of the day, if everything else goes wrong for a band, but you've got 100, 200 loyal, lo lo loyal ride till we die fans, or stream your shit, buy your t-shirts, go on your band camp, do all this sort of stuff. You, you're gonna beat or win above any band that's got fake numbers or whatever, because those that is real tangible people who you can contact and go we've got some stuff come get it and do you think going back to you know what we said at the very beginning of the, of the call that is kind of what a record label can bring you know that those kind of fans that will you know follow yeah. a label and get involved alco pop's really good at it bsm's good at it. church road really good at it you know these are good examples of labels where you're not taste i hate that phrase taste maker but people trust you you know man they, they release some good stuff so if you come with a brand new band and go in Listen to this song, this man on man record. People will go, "Oh no, I trust, I trust BSM. Like, 
the, the mm-hmm. parts of the record and they'll, they'll mm-hmm. go listen to it. Same with Arco, Luke will say the same with Arco Pop, yeah, definitely just, the same with Church Road. Just to sort of follow on from what Dave said is, well, I mean, when I was 14, <laughs> I went to a little festival in Portsmouth and there was an Alka Pop Big Scary Monster stage and fell in love with every band on the stage. And from that point, when I was 14, I followed BSM, I followed Alka Pop. And I would not, a lot of my favorite bands now, I wouldn't be into if it wasn't for those labels introducing me to them. So it's really like, they can be super useful. And that's, that's something obviously working for Alka Pop that I try and continue, you know? And, yeah. I'm, I'm sure Dave is very similar with BSM. They want to, they want to, they want to, keep giving to that fan base as well like they're so appreciated the people that will just sort of not blindly but sort of they'll go like you like dave said that see you've put you've signed a band they'll go you know what i'll give that a shot and sometimes sometimes it's not for me or not for them or but but they will always give it a try and you can't underestimate the value in that um, yeah I just wanted. I saw another question about. I, uh, yeah, go on. You, go, right, let, go me, in. let me read it out so everyone, so everyone's got this. This is from Alice, and Alice is saying, um, she was wondering whether getting any role within a record label um, can going to university be vital, or is experience just as good, if not better? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I went to university, but I did not do music. I did maths and dropped out. Um, so if that's not a good enough answer, like, yeah, you did. <laughs> I, everything that I've got in the music industry has been from doing extra stuff while I was at uni, putting on gigs, grafting, meeting people. So yeah, you don't you don't need a degree. You don't need to. Not not that it's a bad thing. I, some major labels will look for a degree for certain roles, but if you want to get into A and R, you 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 don't need a degree. Go out there, get get experience. Put put yourself out there. Find bands. Show people what you're. Especially with A and R, it's all about your taste and what you like. So go put on put on bands, maybe even start a label, try your stuff mm-hmm. out, and that gives you a track record of what people people can take a risk on. I mean, quickly, because no one out of time, but no A is going to university vital no. But if you go into university means you can get into student radio or I don't know, start writing for a paper, or you like, is it going to open up your 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 sort of experiences? I would say yes. But if you can go and get similar experiences, I don't know, straight hot off the bat, like doing shows, apprenticeships doing or whatever, anything like that. Knock yourself out. Like I say, I didn't I, like I wanted to work music since I was like 16. I didn't get into into music to like into music, into what I'm doing now until I was 32. But I spent those previous years learning stuff, getting experiences. And yeah, uni's not vital, but look for it. Look for anything that you do adding value to you and what you're learning, who you're expo- who you're sort of exposing, who not exposing, so, who you're with, who, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, we yeah. get you. Well, <laughs> you get what I mean, Jesus. That seems like a really good way to, to wrap this up. Um, so if there's any final questions, then get them in now. Um, Alice says thanks. Um, and yeah, um. No worries, Silas. Thank you for coming. Um, and yeah, if anyone else, you know, if you've been watching this, I, I really strongly recommend you check out the pre-recorded one we did with Justine because that was great too. Similar themes, but um, yeah, obviously Church Road are great, and yeah, she's she was great to chat to. And yeah, I'd just like to thank you you both very very much. That was really really fun. Just to quickly echo what Dave said earlier, like uh, my inbox is always open. Feel free to get in touch and ask any questions. Um, Dave said something similar earlier, like introduce yourself say hi tell us what you do because that's that's how you get places that's how we get to know who you are so yeah don't don't be shy email us say hello that's great yeah thank you thank you guys very very much